husbands likewise dwell with them in an understanding way. Now, this go for both. And the first point I want to make here is this. Dwell with them in an understanding way. The word dwell means to live in close proximity with, like marriage. There's something about living together that is different from just um, seeing a passerby on the road. When you live together, you share your life, your feelings. As a matter of fact, Ellen White says that we will be registered in the book of heaven based on who we are in our home life. So I say to people, you, you want to know if you, want, if you are going to make it to heaven? <laughs> Check who you are at home. Because you see, in the street, people can always pretend, but who you are at home, your wife knows you better than the boss or, or anybody at church. Your husband knows you better than anybody else because at home you cannot pretend. You can pretend elsewhere, but at home you are really who you are. You're your true self. And so that's where we really demonstrate um, our inner being. So dwell with. And then he says, dwell with them in an understanding way. Now, this is primarily the reason for my book. Because people need to live with each other based on understanding. In other words, you cannot live with a woman except you understand her. And you cannot live with a man except you understand him. As a matter of fact, the principal cause of divorce is what? Is incredible ignorance. Mm. And sometimes, you know, we, we treat it with scant regard. We don't understand the full import of that statement. But let me just share this with you. You see, a lot of people get married, but they don't know what marriage is about. And they believe that they can just get married and do marriage. As a matter of fact, this is how the average person starts marriage. I like you. I like you. So let's hook up and see where it takes us. Okay? That's how the average person moves into a relationship. I like you. And they, they discount the importance of preparation and knowledge. Let me say something now, for example. Now, I like aircraft, but I can't fly them. Why? I've, I've not done a course in aviation. I don't, I don't know how to fly an aircraft. <laughs> and if I try, if I attempt to fly an aircraft, I must expect a mighty crash. In the same way, people like one another. The man says, I like you. This feels so good. How can I be wrong? Oh, just the texture and the dopamine is secreted. And all the neurotransmitters just fill my brain and they activate the pleasure centers of my brain. And I just want you. But they discount the importance of education. And I say, well, I think I can fly the aircraft. So let me just fly it. Sit in the cockpit. Take off across the Atlantic Ocean then we have a little difficulty. We throw up our arms in despair and the plane comes down. Friends, this is why more than 50% of marriages crash because people don't dwell with their spouse according to understanding, according to knowledge. And this is why I encourage young people, never, oh, never, 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 never get married without, as Dr. Johnson rightly said, without proper premarital preparation. If not, expect a mighty crash. And if you don't crash, you're going to spend your life blundering along. Mm. Okay? And so this is why it says, dwell with them in an understanding way. God places a high premium on knowledge. For example, look at this. What about understanding the needs of your wife? A lot of men are trying to meet their wife's needs. But they don't know what those needs are. And she's still unhappy. She's still miserable every day. Why? These are not things you just don't know it by intuition. You can't imagine it. Men and women are wired differently. And if you don't know her needs, I have 10 fundamental needs of a woman in my book, in my last book, of course, when you, uh, I'll tell you more about it later on. 10 fundamental needs of a woman that you must know if you are to really meet her needs. 
And I, I also my, have, I got my pen out. I got my pen out. I need to hear them. Yes. <laughs> and I also have the fundamental needs of a man that a woman must understand. Honey, get your pen. To make him tick. <laughs> and so people enter marriage and don't know the needs of each other. Did you know, friends, that people marry to have their needs met? <laughs> That's it. And if in marriage your needs are not met, then right there you're sitting down wondering, wow, how can I make my exit and find somebody who will meet my needs? And so, friends, we have to understand the needs of our, of our partner if we are to meet their needs. And guess what? We marry to serve. Oh, yes. <laughs> we marry to serve. Sometimes I say to people, be like your master. Jesus, it is said of Jesus. He came not to be served, but to serve. We could talk much about that. But we marry to meet each other's needs. All right, let's get the rest of the text. That's just about understanding. So dwell with them in an understanding way. And then it says, giving honor unto the wife. Wow, that's, that's loaded. <laughs> honor, what is honor? Honor means to pamper her. Honor means to put her on a pedestal. Honor means to roll out the red carpet for her. Honor means to treat her like your queen. That's honor. And so when a man enters a marriage, he must have this mindset. I'm entering this relationship to pamper this woman. She's deeply emotional. And also the woman to the man, the woman, the man can draw on this as well. For honor, the man needs honor too, because encapsulated in the word honor is respect. And the man needs respect. He cannot live without it. Okay? You may say, well, but I love you. A man doesn't care much about you loving him. A man cares more about you respecting him. Oh, what about that? <laughs> you see, God never made a mistake. Ephesians 5 verse 33, you know what God says? Mm -mm -mm. He says, husband, love your wife. She needs love. And she says, and, and in the same way, wife, see to it that you reverence or respect your husband. So that passage of scripture, Ephesians 5.33, that's where we find the most fundamental differences between the genders. The woman feels important when loved, and the man feels validated when respected. Mm -hmm. And so that's coming from honor. Honor her. Oh boy, we could we, we, we need some time to really flesh this. Yeah, really. All right. Yes. But I want to say something else about this text. This text is, is powerful. Can I say something we don't have time? Take a little more time. I want to get that last part of that text and go to the next couple questions. I don't want to miss out on anybody tonight that wants some deep questions that you want to ask. But you're answering now through the script scriptures. Yes. Go ahead. All right. And then the text says further. It says giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. We can talk about that because in a lot of cases, a, ma a woman is strong in a lot of ways. Of course, her heart is stronger than the man's heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even during those child-rearing years, her heart is made to pump blood to sustain not only her life, but the life of the fetus and sometimes two, three, four. Mm -hmm. One heart. <laughs> So her heart is strong, and this is why a woman outlives a man by eight years, generally. She's strong, but guess what? Why is she regarded as the weaker vessel? Emotionally, yes, she's the weaker vessel. Do you notice any man who is married, and if you are married for any protracted period of time, you'll observe this with your wife, that a woman responds. A woman responds to the leadership of the man. She's a responder. <laughs> so if you bring home winter weather, don't expect to have a sunny wife <laughs> or a summer wife, right? She responds. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know what I like to say to men? You are the thermostat. You set the temperature. You regulate the heat. You are the thermostat. But the wife is the thermometer. She gives the reading. Mm 
Hey man, what about that? Oh, she tells you how hot it is. So the man sets the mood by which the family function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a weaker vessel. She's, she's depending on the man. She's looking to him for supportive leadership. Okay. All right. Anyhow. So, and he says, as the weak of this, and as being ears together of the grace of life. Wow. Ears together. That means treat her as your equal. <clears throat> you know, in some countries, you know, men look down on, on women and, and treat them as a second class citizen. No, she's not. She's not an accessory. She's a fundamental companion. She's a part of the picture. You see, in terms of position she's different okay we have different positions in the home right but in terms of essence she's our equal so joint ears together treat her as your equal right you must treat her respect with respect and then the other person said so as joint ears together with christ oh i want to end with that part here that your prayers be not hindered yeah. Did you know that the wrong treatment of your spouse can cause God to stop his ears when you pray? Mm. Mm. Oh, yes. That's and, serious. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so I want to say this, that God is intimately interested in how we do marriage. So when, when, when there is a rift between the wife and the husband, Is this saying that they shouldn't pray until they get that right? Or is this saying that God has everything on hold until you fix it? Oh, that's it. that's how important conflict resolution is, yes, in the family. As a matter of fact, God says, God says, you come to the altar with your gifts. He says, leave your gifts here. Mm. <laughs> leave your gifts. Leave your don't take your offering with right put it in the plate leave your offering here okay and then rise up and go back home and resolve yes. the conflicts and then you can come back all right so make the first move i wish i could talk about that that's why i'm not talking about conflict resolution i talk about that in depth in my book um understanding marriage right you can get that at lloydallen.org my name I mean, you go there, I talk, I talk a lot about that conflict resolution, the fundamental steps in, in resolving conflicts in relationship. And the first step is this, make the first move. Oh, yeah. Some people wait until, I'm not doing it. They hurt me. They must come to me. I'm not going to them. No, that's not God's way. Make the first move. But suppose I'm not the one who is wrong. Well, you know something? If we look clearly, if we look carefully, we can identify even a small part of the problem wherein we can take responsibility. In other words, take responsibility for even a small part of the problem. Go forth and say, you know, I was being selfish then. I don't even know what I was thinking. <laughs> I was just so being so self-centered and i hurt you so much will you please forgive me mm. oh friend that breaks down barriers many people are waiting even in families people are waiting for 10 20 years just for you to come and to say i was so inconsiderate i i was wrong even a one percent of the problem we can take responsibility for and go and apologize friends that can break down barriers melt away resentment and bind up brokenness and mm. restore amen amen, amen. Yeah, I, I love the way you answer that question i'm i'm going to i know the next one probably be a little more intense i i want you all to go and read ephesians 20 uh, 5 22 to 24 and that's a question tonight that maybe a little hard to hit but i want to get to the next question but that yes. that that verse says wives and i know and this is your favorite verse elder smith yes it wives. Is. <laughs> <laughs> wives, <laughs> to your husband your own husband 
as the Lord as to the Lord. Oh, that's beautiful. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own, O-W-N, own husbands mm -hmm. in everything. Um, Pastor Allen, take one, just a minute to hit that and then we'll go to the next question. All right. That's a beautiful text. I love that passage, by the way, because if we understood it well, oh, our issues would just be corrected. Why submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, and so forth. You know, friends, a lot of people, especially women, women, many women are afraid of the word submission. It's a bad word for them. Oh, it's a cursed word. You just mentioned the word. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> friends. It's a beautiful word. You know, if if we understood it, you see, I want to say it in a simple way, this. If we do marriage God's way, then it's a beautiful thing. Now, first of all, the man must submit to his head. And if the man is first submitted to his head, the woman will have no problem submitting to him. Mm, I like that. Yeah, that's what uh, Dr. Johnson and his wife, they, there's, a, there's a higher archive in their, their home. God is the head. Mm -hmm. And it makes it easy for them to, to coincide with each other because that trust comes from being in love with Jesus. And I think because Pastor Johnson prays and she see her husband on his knees, it can it makes her willing to get on her knees. And I think that is a reflection in the home when when the husband lead out in devotion. And, that, and I think that's the submission that when it says a man submit to God, his wife will. Is there another word? I mean, submit. What's another word for that? Surrender or yield. Okay. Yield. Yield to, yield to his leadership. Yeah. You know, I want to say, Father Pastor, you're so right on that, Doc, um, Dr. Brown, because you see, God didn't just create marriage and say, well, go and do marriage without giving us a guideline and a structure. You see, God is a God of order and a God of structure. The principle of submission is a structure that God created for marriage to function well. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, that, and, and this is what God is saying. The husband, the man submits to me, follows my leadership. And then he imparts, he leads from that perspective. And then the woman gladly submits because she knows he will be leading her in a way that she would choose to be led because he's leading her God's way. Mm. So in other words, if the man leads properly, she will submit readily. Amen. 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 Pastor Brown, I have a question here too. Yes. And I want us to get to this one because this is a question that both singles and married are asking. And that is, what does it mean to be unequally yoked? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> if, if I could share my screen with you, I would just share with you about eight reasons why from my book. Are you, am I able to share a screen, Pastor? Um, I'm not really sure. We have a that's producer okay. that's... All right. That's go okay. ahead what you have. And now I'll just, we're, we're I'll listening just, it out. Right. I'll just quickly... Um, share this um, unequally yoked it is very interesting topic here we go alright I want to say something here friends <clears throat> that I speak on this subject with passion much passion and conviction 
because there are many within our ranks, especially the women who say, well, there's no man in the church. What am I going to do? And then they jump over onto the commons of sin. Right? Onto the commons of the devil. And they, and they, and they, and they get somebody and they say, come back to Eden. Come. To bring them back to the church. But I want to share something here quickly. It's, not, it's amazing. Did you know that Eve met Adam in Eden? <laughs> Eve met Adam and Eve. God, when God created earth, he placed Adam in Eden. What's Eden? Eden is a spot. If you study it in the Latin, uh, you, you understand. Eden is a spot on the earth where God's presence was expressly manifested. Eden. So Adam was placed in the very presence of God. And that's where Eve found him. Hello, watch this now. Every woman must find her Eve. In God's presence in Eden. <laughs> That's the first thing I want to say. And if we try to do it any other way, if you find a man and that man is not first of all in God's presence, mm. can I tell you something, friends? Ladies, I can tell you this. From after 27 years doing this, helping couples across the world, I can tell you this. There's hardly any experience more painful than to be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. So I said to young ladies and young men alike, do not try it by no means and at no time at all. And if you try it, watch this, rivers of tears, acres of heartaches, mountains of problems will be your experience primarily. Of course, there are exceptional cases where, where think something happened and one turns around. But that's exception to the rule. But as a general principle, if God says it, don't do it. Okay? Wow. So God says, be not an equal you. So can I just share quickly um, a few reasons why? Yeah, we got about one minute left. Okay. Wow, you got to get the book. In other words, what, what's this? It says, light and darkness cannot mix, cannot amalgamate. Number one. Number two, a marriage union between a person who believes in God and one who does not is diametrically opposed to God's design of how marriage should be. In other words, uh, if you are a child of God and he is a child of the devil, you're going to have a problem with your father-in-law. Mm -hmm. mm. It is easier for the unbeliever to drag the believer down to their unregenerate state. Mm. And easy way to lose one's vital Christian experience. Number four, the differences of beliefs and disparity in their value systems are enough to render married life extremely difficult and painful. Listen, number five, listen to the experience of those who have tried it, and you'll discover that in almost all cases, rivers of tears have been their experience. Number six, light and darkness cannot mix. Number seven, it's better to be a happy single than a miserable double. <laughs> number eight the children are you are usually thrown amid a tug of war trying to decide on whose side to cast their loyalty especially as it relates to religion and their value system you could be laying the foundation for a miserable existence even for your children Mm, mm. you know friends if i had ever could go into what that means with the yoke you know the, the um the, the two, two ox, right? Um, you know, with different cap capacities and capabilities, and, and and a wooden beam is is thrown across their neck. That's where the concept is coming from, from from the from the field, okay. Mm -hmm. And so as they move along, one is somewhat disabled and the other is healthy. And as they move along, friend, they have a difficulty even plowing that land. <clears throat> one wants to move and has to be dragging the other one behind. It's a prescription for trouble. Wow. Pastor Lord Allen, what a, what a blessing you have been to us tonight. We're going to get the book. Um, uh, Dr. Larry Johnson, uh, I think they're still with us. Um, there's Dr. Johnson, we're, we're so glad to have you all tonight as you. Yes, we're still here. Filled in the gap tonight and you put a, a true blessing to us.
right. and the, the the members and those who's watching been blessed uh just tremendously and elder smith thank you for being a great co-host co-host uh, one of the comments down here uh, and i want to make sure i address that is that sometimes i feel i'm not in the correct spiritual place to be able to be the priest of the home mm -hmm. and um that that's that's a real concept uh, some men may feel that uh, they're not ready to step up to the plate. Um, but rewatch this tonight, and it, it'll give you some foundations to work on. And even uh, El Pastor Johnson have some dynamic sermons. And uh, are you preaching this weekend, Pastor? Uh, no, I'm not. And I don't, don't, don't not go to church because he said that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, we, we, may, may, may I say something quickly about the yeah. Johnsons? You know, I was just inspired to, you know, by their conversation as well. Yeah. I took even notes, um, four things from what they said. They said, you know, um, get somebody to guide you even for the young couple, which is good. They said, communicate. That was so powerful. Also, she says, initiate initiate sex sometimes a lot of ladies don't say, oh, oh, I'm, I'm waiting on the man to do it. no the lady must take must take the lead sometimes I love that right and Dr. Johnson talk about no divorce don't even mention that word as a matter of fact there should be you should make a commitment that there should be no negativity in your home not even in the form of a joke so help me God yeah. so love it love it love it thank, thank you. you yes we're gonna be looking for them to write a book right <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we are so glad that you're on and to all our viewers from our admin broadcasting network you see while we we have an exciting time you ever in the area in tampa bay area please stop by mount calvary's seven Adventist church uh the pastor will be there to welcome you the pastors uh our associate uh, pastor yvette parham and the members i brought one uh, a visitor came to the church uh, a couple of Sabbaths ago and he said he was just bombarded by vis by people coming up to greet him as a visitor. Oh, and and that's the kind of church we have there at Mount Calvary. Amen. And Pastor Lord, we look forward one day to, ha to have you there also. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. So we close out tonight as you will always close out to you. I said, you know, you may think God is mad at you, even in your marriage, even in your relationships. But God is not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. Until next time, stay in love. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Amen. it. Of course, that's my